Good evening, guys. Uh, welcome. A quick thumbs up if you guys can hear. Can you hear me? Mm. Right, that's good enough for me. Right. Today we are going to focus on sequencing series, in particular, the arithmetic sequence and the geometric sequence. Last week, we did the quadratic sequence, and I felt that people responded well to the quadratic sequence, and they understood how to approach questions involving the quadratic sequence. However, we are still going to go back to quadratic sequence once we have done enough arithmetic sequences so that we are able to answer questions that have to do with the linear sequence in the quadratic sequence, the arithmetic sequence in the quadratic sequence. Remember, with the quadratic sequence, the second difference is constant. But that first difference is therefore also a sequence. It's a linear sequence. It's an arithmetic sequence. So we are going to have to look at how that relationship is examined, right? But for today, I hope I do get to some exam questions, but I feel that an understanding of the theory is important here of what do we need to take account of? And then we can look at exam variation. Right. Now let us begin. And I'm quite aware that for those of you in the first learners area, uh, there's low shading now. And some of you, there might be low shading as well. Just, I'm sure you can see, just try and do the best you can because it's quite an important lesson today because it's the background and foundation of the arithmetic sequence and the geometric sequence, right? And I am immediately going to just split my screen to two and say that this is information that is going to have to do with the arithmetic sequence, right? And this is information that is going to do with the geometric. geometric sequence. Perfect. Now, the first thing that we need to remember is that the arithmetic sequence is the linear sequence from grade 11. And what you learned there was that with the arithmetic sequence, the difference between two consecutive terms is equal, is constant. In other words, T2 minus T1 will be your difference. And remember, it's always term after minus term before. D is also T3 minus T2. We are saying this D1 and this D2 are going to be equal. That means the difference is constant. Example, 4, 7, 10. 7 minus 4 is 3. 10 minus 7 is 3. If I give you minus 5, minus seven, minus nine, negative seven, this is worth changing color, negative seven minus negative five will, give, will be negative two. Likewise, negative nine minus brackets, 
minus seven. This also gives us negative two. And the reason I'm doing this is just to show you that don't make mistakes with the signs. There's a difference between the minus in the difference here and the minus for the term. So if it's both of them, it's going to go minus, minus. And that's the difference for the first sequence is three. And the difference for the other sequence is negative two. Right? And then for the geometric series, what makes the geometric sequence geometric is the fact that if you have three terms or an infinite number of terms, for the geometric sequence, the ratio between two consecutive terms is constant. All right? Today is going to be a lot of theory, but we will get to some calculations. All right? We are saying that R1 and R2 are going to be equal, right? And any R after that, the ratio is common. Example, if I give you 3, 6, 12, the ratio is going to be 6 divided by 3. The ratio is also 12 divided by 6. And the ratio is there for 2. And the ratio is there for 2, which means the ratio is 2. Also, if I have 16, negative 8, 4, negative 2, etc., etc., the ratio here would be negative 8 divided by 16. The ratio here would be 4 divided by negative 80. For both of them, R will be negative half, R will be a negative half. And the reason that this sequence, the second one, I'm really showing it to you is because you do get questions that say, find the value of R such that the sequence alternates between positive and negative terms. So we can see that when you solve for R, you'll probably find two values of R, one positive value and one negative value. So the geometric sequence will have an alternative a, a number of terms, positive and negative, when R is negative. The moment R is negative, our sequence will alternate between negative and positive terms. So it's worth noting that all, only R is negative will this case occur. But generally, we are saying we need to be able to distinguish between the arithmetic sequence and the geometric sequence. Thumbs up if you're still happy with that. Thank you. Now, we are saying that, and I'm going to move on here. I'm going to hope that people have the notes because you do need them. But we are good. Can I go on to the next page? Thumbs up if you are happy with me going to the next page. All right. Now. I'm also going to split my screen. And say, okay, if I have four, seven, ten, remember, still arithmetic sequence. 
All right? How do I find the next two terms? This is an exam question. What are you going to do here? You're going to go 7 minus 4 is 3. 10 minus 7 is also 3. So the next difference is still 3 because the sequence is arithmetic or linear. Then 10 plus 3 would have been 13 because I would need to subtract 10 from 13 to get 3. Likewise, the next difference would be 3. 13 plus 3 is 16. Remember, if I have to find the difference, I'm going backwards, isn't it? So to find the next two terms, I would need to be using the additive inverse of minus, which is plus. So to go forward, to find the next terms, I have to be adding because to get the difference I'm subtracting, right? I hope that makes sense. So I'm I'm hoping that people are happy with finding the next two terms, right? And then once we are able to do that, then we can see what about if I want to find the hundredth term and that becomes an issue simply because we cannot do this up to 100 terms. Well, we can theoretically, but it doesn't make sense to do that, to take so long. But we have to think about this being a sequence. So which means that we can try and find a rule that will obey the sequence of adding three for every single term. So what we do then is to say, let T1, which is the first term, equal to A. And let the difference, which is the constant difference, be equal to 3, right? And let's call it D for now to try and find a general formula, right? Do, do we all agree that the first term is A? Thumbs up if you're happy with T1 being A. Perfect. Do we then all agree that T2 is simply the first term with the difference added onto the first term? For example, 4 plus 3 giving you 7. There was thumbs up if you're happy with that. T2 equals to A plus D. And then we're going to have T3 equal to the second term, which is already A plus D. And then you add the difference onto the second term, which will then give you A plus 2D. Thumbs up if you're also happy with T3. Which also means T4 could then be written as A plus 2D, which is the third term, isn't it? And you add the difference onto the third term and you get A plus 3D. Thumbs up if you're happy with T4. And then there is a pattern that almost generates them. If I think about T5, we can see with the, all the other ones, T1 was just A, T2 was A plus 1D, T3 was A plus 2D, T4 was A plus 3. So it's almost like T5 would be A plus one less what I've got here which is 5, which will be 4D. T10 will therefore be A plus 1 less 10 to be 9D. 
thumbs up if you're happy with that. Which means that T N is going to be equal to A plus one less N, which is N minus one D. And that becomes the general term of the arithmetic sequence. And the general term is an important tool that we are going to discuss after generating the same formula for the geometric sequence. Thumbs up, guys, if you're still happy with me here. Right. Now, for the geometric sequence, likewise, if I have Three, six, twelve. All right. We can see that the ratio is six divided by three, which is two. Confirm that it's constant. Twelve divided by six, which is also two. Right. Thumbs up if you guys can hear me. Thank you. Now, the next thing that you're going to focus on is then how do you find your next two terms, all right? And because we find the ratio by dividing, we find the ratio by dividing. What we are going to do is to say, to find the next terms, I will simply go multiplied by, right? That is, the inverse of multiplication or of division. Division is the inverse of multiplication. Multiplication is the inverse of di division. So because I, when I find the ratio, I divide. To find the next term, I'm going to multiply. Multiply by what? By the ratio. So I'm going to go 12, right, times 2 is 24. 24 times 2 is 48. And this is how I'm going to find my next two terms. Thumbs up if you're still happy with that. That's perfect. And then we are going to say And then we are going to say, to find a general formula for this, because like, again, I can't do this infinitely. I'll go T1 equals to A and R equals to R. T1 is A. Do we all agree that to find the second term, I'm going to take A multiplied by R, because it's 3 times 2, which gives you this. Thumbs up if you're happy with that.
right thank you guys and then t3 would be the six which is in this case a r multiplied by another r and then using your laws of exponents this would be a r to the power of two thumbs up if you're happy with that statement Perfect. And then likewise, T4 would then be the third term, AR squared, times R once more, which would then be AR to the power of three. And just like with the arithmetic sequence, a pattern generates T5 will be AR to the power of four. T10 would be AR to the power of nine. Therefore, TN would be a r to the power of n minus one and that is the formula for the geometric series or sequence in this case for the general term thumbs up if you're happy with that perfect now that is important information guys and the reason that is important information is simply because when we look at sequences in series, the general term plays an important role, a very important role. Number one, the, the role that the general term plays is the fact that you can find any term in the sequence using the general term, right? In this case, for example, I can find T hundred, the hundredth term, by substituting hundred in in the place of n, and thus getting. Remember, you have a value of a and d, and thus getting the value of T hundred. Right. You can also calculate number of terms. Maybe we write down what each of the general term represents. Right. Like I said, today is theory because it's important that you understand where all these things come from so that we can start discussing this arithmetic sequence. All right? We know that Tn is equal to A plus N minus 1 D. All right? Tn represents the general term, the nth term, and even or the last term. Fair enough? What does that mean? If I give you a sequence, I can go 7, 10, right? Find T100. I'm going to say T100 is part of this sequence. What formula represents general term? General means all the terms in the sequence, isn't it? So I'm going to go Tn is equal to A plus N minus 1D. Tn is equal to my A is the first term plus N minus 1. My difference is 3 in brackets. Tn equals to 4 plus 3n minus 3. Tn is equals to 3n plus 1. And that becomes the general term. Once you have the general term, you can then say Tn is equals to, rather T100 equals to 3 times 100 as 1 which is T100 equals to 301. So the 100th term is 301. 
thumbs up if you're happy with that information. Perfect. And then, okay, what if I give you four, seven, I'm getting a bit ahead of myself, um, 10, ten And that continues. All the way until. Ninety one. Right. Four. Seven. All the way until. Ninety one. And the question is, how many terms are in this sequence? How many terms? How many terms in the sequence? How many terms in sequence? All right? And all you're going to see is that we know that the very last term is 91, right? The very last term is 91. The value of the very last term is 91. And 91 is occupying the final position. Remember, N represents the number of terms, the number of positions. We know TN represents general term, nth term or last term. A represents the first term. D represents the difference. N, N represents number of terms or positions. So if I want to know how many terms there are or how many positions there are. Do we all agree that all I need to know is which position 91 occupies? Because 91 is the last position. If I know what position 91 occupies, I will automatically know how many positions there are or how many Perfect, which then means that I'm going to have Tn is equals to A plus N minus one D, right? And then we know, wait, Tn could be the general term, the nth term or the last term. So I want to know, okay, the value is 91. And I want to know what position does 91 occupy? A is four. Four plus three times N is three N. Three times negative one is negative three. 91 equals to four minus three, which would be three N plus one. What I do want to stress is that this three N plus one was the general term, isn't it? And I want to stress that maybe you must find the general term first, then substitute 91 in place of T to show that it's the last term. Then I'm going to have 91 minus one, additive inverse of positive one, which will be three N, and I'm going to have 90 is equals to 3n. 
divide both sides by three. It's a linear equation. We spoke about algebra last week. N equals to 90 over three, which is 30. Thumbs up if you are happy with that. Okay, I've got a question from Yin. Sure. You can unmute. Oh, so I want to say, um, so I wanted to ask if you like you were given a certain sequence, right? Yeah. And then let's say let's take this sequence points and then they said maybe which terms will be divisible by a certain number, let's say by four or three. So how would you go about doing that one? All right. Uh I'm going to show you just now with one where the terms are divisible and then I explain how you do that one. And All right. I, okay. I was going to get to those kinds of questions when we get to variation, but I might as well just give you a, a quick tip because it's not difficult to do that, All right? Um, just before I answer uh, Umien, I just want to know to the rest of you, are we fine with this one? Just thumbs up quickly again once more if you're fine with what I've done here. Because what we are saying with this is we are saying when you have the last term, it is the equivalent of being given number of terms. And as we do the next questions, the next couple of questions, we are going to realize the importance of number of terms. We must, when we are dealing with a sequence, we must always know how many terms are in that sequence, right? So it becomes important. And this is the first way in which number of terms can be given indirectly, right? We, we know that there are plenty of ways number of terms can be given, but one of them, and maybe for me, the most important one is when you are given the last term. Guys, I need us to understand this. When you are given the last term, it's an equivalent of being given number of terms. Because with the last term, you're going to go and find the general term of the sequence. And then once you have the general term of the sequence, what are you going to do? You are going to substitute the last term in place of Tn. Because T is just value, isn't it? And once you get the right value in the, in the in this case, the last term, then N will tell me what position 91 occupies. But because 91 is the last term, that means the position I get will be the position of the last term, which consequently will give me what the last, how many terms there are in the sequence by virtue of just knowing what the last term is. Thumbs up if you're still happy with that. So don't forget this. When we are given the last term, we can now find number of terms in the sequence. All right, and a quick detour to what Banda was asking. All right, Umien, think about it. If I give you A sequence, right? And I'm going to make it, it's arithmetic, right? Negative two into one into four, et cetera, et cetera, right? And then I'm going to give you another one, the one that we just did now. Four, right? Oh no, not four. Um, not four. I'm gonna give you a uh, negative three. Zero, three, et cetera. Right, what is the difference for this one? Three, one minus two, 
4 minus 1 is also 3. 0 minus minus 3. 0 minus minus 3 is 3. 3 minus 0 is also 3. General term here, Tn is equals to A plus N minus 1D. Tn is 3, rather negative 2, plus N minus 1 times the difference, which is 3. Tn is going to be, your algebra here should be fine. You're going to get 3N minus 5, right? And then for this one, same thing. A plus N minus 1D, you're going to get Tn is equal to 3N minus 6. Thumbs up if you're happy with both those general terms. Right. Then the question is, show that all the terms in this sequence, this first one, are divisible by three, or none of these terms in the sequence are divisible by three. I'm just making an example, right? Now, you are not going to expand infinitely and maybe expand to 10 terms or 20 terms and then divide each one by three to prove that the terms are divisible by three. That's not allowed. Because even if I prove 20 terms divisible by three, right? It doesn't guarantee that the next 20 are also divisible by three or the next five even are divisible by three. So to prove that all the terms in the sequence are divisible by three, you need to divide an expression that contains all the terms in the sequence. And that expression is the general term. So if I want to prove that the sequence, all the terms in the sequence are divisible by three, I need to divide the general term by three, which basically means I'm dividing this by three. Then I'm going to get an expression that is n minus five over three. Five over three is a decimal, right? It's not a whole number, which means that some of the terms in this sequence are not divisible by three because it leaves a remainder. In order for all the terms in the sequence to be divisible by three, you need to show that even the general term is divisible by three, which means that this would be n minus two. That shows that the general term is divisible by three. You could also simply say Tn is equal to, take out a common factor of three, you're left with n minus two. If the general term is divisible by three, the threes will divide out. This tells you that all the terms in this sequence are divisible by three. Why? Because the general term is also divisible by three. Thumbs up if you're happy with that. I'm going to unmute uh, Umieni again, Umieni. Oh, all right. Oh, oh, yeah, I see, sir. Now, so and if then... you're going to prove that a sequence is divisible by five, then you need to show that the general term is divisible by five. And for both sequences, not just for arithmetic, same thing applies for geometric. You will find that it's divisible by that number. Okay. Therefore, the sequences, the, all the, the terms in the sequence are divisible by five because the general term contains all the terms in the sequence. Oh, okay, sir. All right. Uh, thank you. Any other question? Are you fine? Yes, sir. I'm fine. Thank you, sir. All right. Thumbs up if you guys are happy with that. That's perfect. Right. The next thing that is key for us is that I have just shown you 
I have just shown you how we use the last term to find number of terms for an arithmetic sequence. And you will see me do the same thing for geometric. Why? For two reasons. Number one, because the algebra is different, right? One is exponents, one is linear, isn't it? So we need to get the algebra right, right? But the most important thing and the most critical thing is to understand the importance of the last term, right? For example, if I go, okay, two, four, eight, right? Find the general term. A equals to two, R equals to two. Four divided by two is two. Eight divided by four is two. Tn is equals to AR to the power of N minus one. Tn is equals to A is two into R is also two to the power of N minus one. Now, a quick side note. Just like with the arithmetic sequence, and I need to show you this. With the arithmetic sequence, you when you found the general term, you didn't stop after substitution, right? You didn't stop after substitution. You didn't stop after substitution, isn't it? You simplified. I need to note for you guys that with the exponential, depending on the question, we are allowed to simply leave your answer after substitution. But if sometimes they want you to simplify further, I don't want you to be alarmed. It's easy, isn't it? All you're going to do is you're going to say Tn is equals to two. And then you're going to split the exponent. You know this from grade 10 and 11. You can split the exponent. Why? So that that and that are just numbers, isn't it? Two to the power of negative one is one over two. 2 times 2 to the power of negative 1 is 1. Therefore, what you're left with is simply 2 to the power of n. So this is the equivalent of 2 to the power of n. For example, and I'm just going to show you quickly, side note, if my general term was tn equals to 2 to the power of 3 times n minus 1, if you had to simplify further, tn is equals to 2 into 3 to the power of n into 3 to the power of negative 1. That and that are just numbers. Two is two, three to the power of negative one is two over three, is, is one over three. Two times one over three is two over three into three to the power of n. Thumbs up if you're happy with that. So don't be alarmed when you get to some questions on the geometric sequence and they are asking you to do those kinds of things, right? You have to be willing to do the exponents there, simplifying exponents, et cetera, et cetera. Right, again, I've got my general term. Are you guys with me here? So if they want you to find T6, all you're going to do is go T6, find the general term, then T6 is two into two to the power of six minus one. T6, is going to be equal to two to the power of six minus one is 32 times two is 64. So your T6 is 64. Thumbs up if you're happy with that. Thank you guys. Now, what about if you get a question two, four, eight, right? All the way to 20, 2048, all right? How many terms are in the sequence? What are we given again? Last 10. So what are you going to do? You're going to go find the general term, which because of the last question, I already know is two into to the power of n minus one. And then you're going to say, 
right? And then you're going to see uh, the last term is 2048 equals to 2 into 2 to the power of n minus 1. And what you're going to find is what position does 2048 hold? The last term, what position does it have? So you're going to go divide by 2, divide by 2, isn't it? For that coefficient, which will be 1024 is equal to 2 to the power of n minus 1. And through your exponents, laws of exponents, you're going to write 10 to the power of 24, which is, you're going to help me out here, is it 2 to the power of 9? Let me just get my calculator, guys. Right, guys, it's 2 to the power of 10 is equal to 2 to the power of n minus 1. This comes from your laws of exponents. Remember, if you're solving exponential equations and the unknown is in the exponent, make your basis the same so that you can equate the exponents. Then that becomes a linear equation. And how do you solve linear equations? Unknown one side, numbers one side, 11 equals to n. So 2048 holds position 11 in the sequence. And because it's the last term, that means there are 11 terms in the sequence. Thumbs up if you're happy with that. Perfect. So now we understand the importance of the last term. The last term is as if we are given the number of terms, because you can now find the general term. And once you have the general term, because the general term represents what? The nth term or the last term, the, the value of the last term, then you can substitute Tn with the last term and calculate what position the last term holds. And once you can do that, then you are able to solve for n. Thumbs up if you're still happy with that. Perfect. Theory, guys, all this I'm going to need, right? And that's why we have to do this theory. Then the next thing that we have to discuss is series, isn't it? And what is series from sequences and series? What is the series part? The series part is sum, isn't it? Sometimes we are interested in adding the terms of the sequence, right? And likewise, you have the arithmetic series and the geometric series. And remember, the proofs for this formula are examinable, right? But I am not going to do them. What I will do is say, go to the maths videos for grade 12, go to sequences and series, and go to proofs of, sequence, of formulas for series and you'll find my proofs there. I've proved them, and then if you don't understand, you can always ask me on Wednesday. I don't mind doing one or two of them, but we have to go and learn how to prove. It doesn't change, it's a formula, right? You've got to go and learn how to prove. That's example, that's easy marks. Okay, for arithmetic series, you will find that number one, the symbol for sum is Sn, and what Sn represents, is sum of the first 10 terms. When I say that again, 
sum of the first n terms, right? So if they go S10, they are saying add the first 10 terms, right? Sn is equals to n over 2 into a plus l. Now, we already know what Sn represents. Sn is sum of the first n terms. n is number of terms. Because I can't just find, I can't just go find the sum without being explicit for how many terms, isn't it? It has to be explicit. And then a, first term, l, last term. It has to be quite clear how many terms of the series you want to find the sum for. And then the other formula is n over 2 into 2a plus n minus 1d. And a quick side note for this one is the fact that we know that Sn is equals to n over 2 into a plus l. What we just say last term is, we said last term is Tn, which is a plus n minus 1d. So Sn can be written as n over 2 into what is a? a plus what is the last term? a plus n minus 1d. So Sn is equals to n over 2 into a plus a, like terms, 2a plus n minus 1d. Thumbs up if you are happy with that. Thank you so much, guys. All right, let's go back to our main slide here. And then you're going to go, okay. For the geometric series, Sn Sn is equal to what? A into r to the power of n minus 1 all over r minus 1 when r is greater than 1. And then Sn is also equal to a into 1 minus r to the power of n over 1 minus r when r is less than 1. And guys, I am going to insist on you using the appropriate formula depending on the value of r. Right? When r is greater than 1, we're going to use the one at the top. When r is less than 1, we're going to use the one at the bottom. It has to be like that. And you will see it once we do convergence on why it's very, very important to use the right formula at the right time. Thumbs up if you're happy with the formulas for sum. And remember, all those formulas, we need to prove them. We need to know how to prove them. We need to know where they come from. But I am, for now, I am more interested on using them than where they come from, right? I'm more interested in using them, applying them than where they come from. And just a quick, quick, quick uh, uh, bit of information. Guys, remember in grade 10, you did equations and you were taught that you should be able to make certain equations subject of the formula, isn't it? Which means that now I can give you a question where the sum is given and then I want to find number of terms, which means that we are actually seeing a second way in which number of terms can be asked. So we saw that when you are given the last term, you're going to use TN to find number of terms. But if I am given the sum, I can't use TN. I must use an expression of the sum, which is what? SN. Thumbs up if you're happy with that. Right. And we will see questions uh, as we do algebra, isn't it? Now, the next question, the next slide for me, which I think is important. 
is, and I'm gonna do this now, is sigma notation, right? And I think that is important. I know this is a lot of information. Remember, you can always go back and watch these videos. But I do want to talk about sigma notation. And the reason I want to talk about sigma notation is because it is a way of writing sums in shorthand, isn't it? Sigma is Greek for sum. The summation notation, sigma notation. Are you guys with me here? Now, there are three components that are in sigma. Three. Three components. And if I give you sigma of Tn from n equals to 1 up to n equals to P, we can clearly see there are three components to that. The first component is the lower limit. What does the lower limit tell us? The lower limit tells us that when you want information to be given in terms of sigma, right? I'm gonna give you a question as I'm doing this question, right? Let's say I've got K equals to one of six of 2k plus one, right? This is sigma, isn't it? Now, n equals to one is what? The lower limit. It is not saying the first term is one. No, it's saying when you substitute, start at k equals to one. So what are you going to do? You're going to say, okay, k equals to one, right? Which means that, 2 into 1 plus 1 is equals to 3. So when I substitute the lower limit, I get a value. That value is my first term. Thumbs up if you are happy with what the lower limit does. Thank you, guys. And the lower limit... is an integer. Normally, at this level, lower limit is simply integer, so, right? So it can take on negative values as well. Are you guys with me here? But it is the lower limit. In other words, it's gonna be the lowest of the two, right? And then the one at the top is the upper limit. This is the last value we substitute. In other words, we now know that, okay, after K is one, what is the next integer? K is two. Two times two plus one is five, which means the next term after three is five, right? And then we have K equals to three, which will be two times three plus one, which is equals to seven. K equals to four. Two times four plus one equals to nine. K equals to five. 2 times 5 plus 1 equals to 11. K equals to 6. 2 times 6 plus 1 equals to 13, which means my series, remember series is sum. It's still a sequence, but with plus in between because it's now sum, which means my sum is like that, right? This is me taking information that is written in terms of sigma notation and then expanding that information, right? I'm taking information written in terms of sigma notation. Taking information written in terms of sigma notation and expanding it. Thumbs up if you're happy with how you're going to expand in terms of sigma. All right, I would love more hands here. Thank you guys. Right, now once we understand that foundation, right, next thing that is key 
is to understand what that is. And that is something that you already know how to calculate, which is general term. Are you guys with me here? So that is the general term of the series. Now, if I go to... Another example, right? We're not in a rush. We really want the theory to be well done. N equals to negative two of 15 of 2K, two, rather 2N two minus five. What you're going to do here, what does sigma mean? Sum, right? You are going to, and the question is evaluate evaluate right evaluate now guys i really want you to follow me up here evaluate maybe go back to the question so that you're going to see where this comes from right how many terms were in this series one two three four five six right so number of terms is six. So how do we then find number of terms when we are given in terms of sigma? Can I say number of terms is basically the upper limit? Well, let's put that to the test, right? If I go, if I go sigma, from k equals to four of six of two k plus one, right? What is that saying there? The lower limit is four, which means when I expand, I'm gonna start at k equals to four, isn't it? So I'm going to have two times four plus one, which is nine right and then when k equals to five i'm gonna have two times five plus one which is equals to 11. and then when k equals to six which happens to be my upper limit my final integer plus one that is going to be 13. which means i've got nine plus 11 plus 13. how many terms now one two three so number of terms is three. So is number of terms the upper limit? And the answer now is a definite no, right? Number of terms depends on both the lower limit and the upper limit. And as it turns out, when you are given in terms of sigma, number of terms is simply the upper limit minus the lower limit, and then you add one. That's all it is. Number of terms will be upper limit minus lower limit add one, which is going to be equal to three. Three terms. The one that we did before, number of terms, number of terms, upper limit minus lower limit add one. Number of terms, my upper limit is six minus my lower limit is one add one. Number of terms, six minus one is five plus one is six. So there are six terms in this series. Thumbs up if you are happy with how we find number of terms when we're given sigma. I'm seeing a lot of thumbs up there. Thank you guys. Now, that is important. Now guys, you get a question in the exam. Let's go back here. We get a question in the exam. What was the question? Evaluate. What is that then? This is sigma. What does sigma mean? Sum. So they are saying evaluate sigma, evaluate the what? The sum. Right. And to evaluate the sum, we know that we've got sum of arithmetic or sum of geometric. Now, the general term already gives you an You guys are familiar with the general term. This is general term for arithmetic because for geometry, the general, the n or the number of terms is an exponent, isn't it? So this is linear. But to confirm, 
we expand and write down the first terms. Right? When n is equal to negative 2, 2 into negative 2 minus 5, which is negative 9. And when n equals to negative 3, 2 into negative 3 minus 5, which is equal to uh, minus 11. And then, rather, I'm sorry, guys, this is wrong. Remember, it's next integer, isn't it? From negative 2, you move to negative 1, right? 2 into lower limit is the smallest one possible. So you can't move to smaller. You need to move towards 15. So from negative 2, the next integer is negative 1, isn't it? You move to the next integer, approaching 15. All right, sorry for the confusion there. Negative 7. N equals to 0. 2 into 0 minus 5 equals to negative 5. Those are my first three terms. Of course, it doesn't stop there, but all you need are the first three terms. Now, I'm putting minus instead of plus there because negative times positive is negative. So sometimes you get a question where the series is given in terms of that, where you don't have plus, you just have minus. The reason you only have minus is because the terms are negative, and positive times negative is negative. Thumbs up if you're happy with that statement. Thank you. And then the next thing that you're going to say is once you have your first three terms, then we need number of terms, isn't it? They wanted the sum. And to find sum, you need number of terms. Number of terms, upper limit minus lower limit plus one. Number of terms, what is my upper limit? 15. Minus, what is my lower limit? Minus two. So it's minus for the formula, then minus two because our lower limit is negative two plus one. This is going to be 15 plus two, which is 17. 17 plus one which is 18. Thumbs up if you are happy with the fact that our number of terms is 18. That's perfect. And then from then on, I'm going to go sum of the first n terms of this series is n over 2 into 2a plus n minus 1d, and then you're going to get Sn is equals to, how many terms, by the way, guys? 18 terms is equals to 18 all over 2 into 2. What is my first term? Negative 9 plus n, which is 18, minus 1, and then the difference is going to be positive 2. We know how to find the difference, isn't it? d is t2 minus t1, which is d equals to 2. d, just to confirm, t3 minus t2, d is equals to 2. And then, guys, I should say this. Unless you are looking for a variable that is here, then you would have to do algebra. But if you are looking for SN, which is already the subject of the formula, it's formula, correct substitution, then final answer. Don't do 2 times negative 9, negative 18, then 18 minus 1 is 17. Don't do it step by step. Just punch that in into the calculator. Learn to punch that in into the calculator as it is so that you get your solution. I'm also going to be punching it in. I am expecting that we are all punching it in, guys. Can we all please punch this in?
I am getting 144. Thumbs up if you're also getting that as well. So the sum of the first 18 terms of this series is 144. And the series is arithmetic, right? And that's how you do with them. Now, we have explained how to find number of terms. Now, the last thing that I want to do, I, which I feel is important for today, is how to also write a series. You have just seen how to write a series when you are given in terms of sigma, how to expand it, isn't it? It's also important to be able to write a sequence that is expanded in terms of sigma notation. And you get that in an exam a lot. All you need to do, let's say three plus six plus 12 plus dot, 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 into, I'm making this up guys, so just hang on a bit. Write 15,000 or 1,536. Write, so write the following series in sigma notation. What are you going to do? Guys, follow what I'm going to do here now. Huh? You're going to go, okay, A is 3, the difference or rather the ratio is 2. 6 divided by 3 is 2. 12 divided by 6 is 2. Right. What do I need? I need to write it in terms of sigma notation. You, When you are the one writing in terms of sigma notation, you are always going to make your lower limit to be 1. Why? Because we have already seen that when the lower limit is 1, then the upper limit the upper limit is also equal to the what? Number of terms, right? Why? Because number of terms equals to upper limit minus lower limit plus one. So if your upper limit, right? If your lower limit is one plus one minus one plus one becomes zero. So your N is now equal to the upper limit. So number of terms becomes the upper limit when the lower limit is one. Thumbs up if you're happy with that. Number of terms is not the upper limit. Don't get me wrong. But I'm saying when the lower limit is one, then the number of terms will be equal to the upper limit. Why? Because minus one plus one will, will subtract out and then you're left with n equals to u. Right. Now, the reason I'm telling you that is because when we are writing in terms of sigma, I already know what my lower limit is. All I need is my upper limit. And to do that, I need my, my number of terms. And to find my number of terms, I look at what I've got. I've got the last term. At the beginning of our lesson, we said, the moment you are given the last term is the equivalent of being given number of terms because you can now go Tn equals to, this is geometric. Tn is equals to, a is 3, R is 2 to the power of N minus 1. What is my last term? 1,536 equals to 3 into 2 to the power of N minus 1. Divide by 3, divide by 3. 1,536 divided by 3 is 512, which is equal to 2 to the power of N minus 1. 512 can be written as 2 to the 9 is equal to 2 to the power of n minus 1. The bases are the same. Therefore, the exponents are also the same. And then 9 plus 1 is equal to n. 10 equals to n. So how many terms are in this series? 10. Because the last term is position number 10. 
but the last term in this case is also equal to the what? The upper limit. So when you write this in sigma notation, you're gonna go, you're gonna go sigma from n equals to one up to 10 of what? What did I say the third component is? General term, which you already found when you were finding your number of terms. And that is how we write in terms of sigma notation. So you've got sigma from n equals to one up to 10 of Thumbs up if you're happy with that. All right, guys. Um, we have covered quite a lot of theory. Not a lot of calculations, but quite a lot of theory. But with the theory we have covered, we have actually done enough so that on Wednesday, when we meet, we can now look at exam variation. Andres is going to post on the WhatsApp group and also on the app a document which shows variation of questions. And we are going to be looking at how to approach those questions uh, on Wednesday. Uh, guys, Wednesday session is going to be very important. I'm going to give everyone... the ability to unmute themselves, right? I know that I've covered basics. I hope it's basics. It's not something that's difficult, but how many people found today's lesson useful in the sense that they learned something new? And if you don't mind, just unmute if you learned something new that you had not seen before, and then tell me what it is so that I know exactly where I need to stress uh, when I do, what I need to stress when I do questions on Wednesday. Oh, say, Kuluna lady, ne? Yeah, so today, ne, Yelanga funda guti, e upper limit, it's all orangian, because I didn't know before, guti, it's all orangian, upper limit, la sigma notation. Actually, quite important how to find that upper limit when you're writing in terms of sigma. It's important. You need number of terms for that. Sometimes they give you number of terms. Yes, sir. 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 Yes, Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 just mute. Going... just mute there quickly. I understand what you're saying. Yes, you've got a, a sometimes you get questions where there's infinity at the top, but that's convergence. And I've not discussed convergence today. I'm going to discuss convergence on Wednesday. So we'll see how to do those questions on Wednesday when we do convergence. Sure. Right, guys, my suggestion, Andris, are you still there? Okay, Andris is probably in a meeting, but... He... Hi, hi, sorry, Andres... I'm just in a different session. But yeah, I think I'll just post that WhatsApp link That's... for you guys to get updated. And then for people with Androids, if you update to the latest version, you should be able to find these videos there. Otherwise, they are available on our YouTube channel. And then the people who are using iOS by Wednesday, you should be able to access them. So yeah, so I think that's what's on my side. I'll just paste it now on the chat. Okay, thank you. So guys, what Andres is saying is that you can now go through the videos that the other lessons that we did, right? And 
I'm I am I'm, I'm going to hope that Andres can when can you post this lesson by Andres? One more, sorry. Yeah, so it's gonna be up before the end of today, probably in the next hour or so. But I'll post it on that WhatsApp as soon as it's available. Okay, as soon as the video is available, guys, you can rewatch it because I am going to expect you to be doing some questions uh, from your textbooks, from your past papers on what we did today. Because when we do variations on Wednesday, you must be perfect with what we did today. It's, it's basics, but it's important stuff. For example, when I give you the last term, I expect you guys to know immediately that the last term can be used to find number of terms. If I give you sum, I can use the sum to find number of terms. If I give you sigma notation, I can use that to expand. I can find the sum and I can write a series in terms of sigma. Those, those things are important. So just go through the videos once more if you have any problems. Wednesday session is one of the most important sessions for us if we're going to be understanding how to solve, a, to solve sequen sequences and series problems. So Andres will do that for us. I will send the document that I expect you to have gone through by Wednesday. There's some very interesting questions and then we're going to be fine. Guys, if there are no other questions, I think we've come to the end of the lesson. I think Andres has already posted the link. There it is, join in. And then he also said something that, that is the link to the WhatsApp channel, right? And then he has also said that make sure if you're using an Android device, go to Play Store, update the app. There's videos, the videos are now available. The, on, the live lesson videos are now available. Don't forget to rate us on the app that helps us quite a lot. And then for those of you on iOS, your iPhones or iPads, you are going to be having the same access by Wednesday, I believe. Let's just say Friday to make sure, right? Yeah. Otherwise, for now, you could be using our YouTube channel, right? Andres, can you also post the link to our YouTube channel so that they can be able to subscribe onto our channel and you can get those videos there as well. Right, if there's no other questions, I think that we've come to the end of our lesson. Guys, it was a pleasure. I'll see you on Wednesday, same time. Hopefully no low shading on Wednesday. Thank you. Andres has just posted the link to our YouTube channel as well. Thank you, Andres.